they aren't really well known to be theologians. They don't have a whole like understanding of putting it all together, what happened with uh, Genesis and all the way through. Friends did um, talk a lot about the Gospel of John. They talked a lot about um, revelations. In fact, they thought they were living in apocalyptic times. They didn't see themselves as a religion. When they started in the 1650s, the early friends, Fox and some other people that were kind of wandering around, uh, gathering different meetings, and uh, there was groups of seekers all around these times, they called themselves the children of the light or they called themselves the first publishers of the truth. One of Fox's terms was sowers of the seed. And what's the seed? But another image of the living God or Christ. So there was, uh, there was all this foment around them because they're living in these pretty turbulent times. And one of the myths that I learned in um, looking up friends is that those first 10 years, they were, they were okay with the military. And it wasn't until 1661 that they <coughs> began to, with this continuing revelation of how is God speaking to them, they began to withdraw from um, carrying any um, rifles or, or trying to fight people. And so these early friends are, are gathering, and Spothmore Hall is where <coughs> Margaret Fell had a, an estate with a working farm that she ran, so she kind of ran a small business. And yet all these friends would gather there, and it was a, a place where there was a lot of um, networking. It was kind of Grand Central Station for those first 20 years. Margaret was known as the nurturing mother of Quakerism. And when they met, there was a lot of publishing going on in those first um, 50 years. And you read them talking to each other, as if they were beloved, not just that they were a loving community, but as if they were really, um, like we are soulmates from the womb of our mother. Their words to themselves were really tender. And then they had this amazing confrontation that they spoke to others because in the 1650s, we wonder why were the friends so persecuted? They spoke to the hypocrisy of the times. They felt the experience of God's love inside them, transformation inside them, and then they wanted to let other people know. They were totally into spreading their truth. And so we can see them as evangelists, if you're not too allergic to that word. They knew <coughs> that, that the truth was alive in them and that it would, could be found in that of God in other people too. And they wanted to bring that up as much as possible. So there was this ecstatic joy that they had with each other. And then there was going out into the world. And they said that not only um, are they speaking in line with scriptures, but they were bringing it to their century, what, what truth they needed to address. Because they felt like the church leaders and the religion was a vain activity going on, that the, the preachers were just mouthing words without having that fire and spirit within them. For Quakers, the scripture were only a declaration of the fountain, not the fountain itself. Amen. So God's immediate speaking, that happened when um, some of these scriptures were written, is speaking to us today. And that's that seed that is growing, the low plant that is rising. So there's a sense of, I am empowered by God, but also, I'm just an instrument. I'm just a servant. You know, that it's the power that's going to convince people. It's not me telling you have to be a Quaker. Mm -hmm.